but twice during their match. Yeah, so I'm assuming Pick Nitro is just going to go with Lisa again. Yeah, and definitely. I haven't seen him go anyone else. And I don't know, so far, but what I've heard, he is a huge and avid Lisa fan. So he's going to stick with her all the way. You know, win or lose, you know, which is good. See, uh, you represent and, you know, care for a character so much. So I don't know if Airgear here is going to be discouraged from using Rachel again or is he going to move to Hitomi? Yeah, I think he's going to use Rachel again because he's in losers now. He can't afford to try to, because his Hitomi is not all that good. He's mainly, he's mainly a Rachel player mm -hmm. because in DOA uh, 4, he used Spartan. That was his main. And Rachel's the closest thing to Spartan. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, he primarily is going to stick with her. Hitomi was the character he was using until Rachel came out. Well, Hitomi and Genfu, but he dropped Genfu due to he said Genfu was a really boring character, <laughs> which I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Watching Genfu play is like watching paint dry. It's it's nothing, <laughs> nothing worth watching. So, I mean, I don't know if, like, a lot of these characters are just going to end up getting nerfs, buffs for last round, but... Yeah, I hope my Paichan gets buffed. She needs it. Because she's she's too weak compared to like the rest of the cast. Yeah, like I've I I've never I haven't even seen the last time I even seen a Pi player. Yeah, I was honest. I was playing Pi for casuals, and despite like I just it's kind of discouraging because you'll do like 15 hits and that person hit you twice yeah. and it will equal damage. Yeah, it was like the same thing with Rig too. Like I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, my friends didn't want me to go back to Rig. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit discouraged when I started training with him a couple of days before the event here. And I mean, like, I feel like he's he's a little bit more grab punishable, especially some of his attacks end up becoming way too negative in my opinion. So I feel like I am scared to freaking grab, try to throw <laughs> punish Rig because it's something like he's always just on the offensive, always throwing out attacks. And so, like, for people that haven't faced him, that don't know what his frames are and stuff, then you can get away with a lot, because a lot of his stuff looks like it's safe. Yeah. So, I, all I do is I stay low and I just jab at his feet. And that, and hope for the best when I go against him. Yeah. Right, so, I think this is button check, is it? I feel standing. So, I'm not here. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, judging by the button check here, yeah, people, um, Air Gear's gonna go with Rachel and Nitro's with Lisa, of course. Yeah, looks like they're both. I would like to see business attire versus business attire, but Air Gear's not cool like that. He doesn't want. He doesn't <laughs> want to coordinate, so he's gonna go with the nurse outfit. what stage they get it wants to be like in one of the oh, oh okay well i don't think we've seen the stage yet all right misses oh okay. nice. i don't even think that grab was it's kind of just weird i don't think that grab should have happened but i think he stayed crouching that's probably why but i don't know uh lisa's gonna have to be really careful here yeah because She's a really good spacing character, and Rachel is a character that has to be all in your face. And to keep in mind too, because usually Nitro ends up waking up a lot with um, that one that kick. That spin kick yeah. Oh, Erger tried going for a power blow little mix-up game, but uh, no, this is like no, I'm not having it. Ooh. All right, yeah. Oh, guarantee force tech. What's gonna happen? All right, goes with the high kick. Oh, with the counter. Oh, oh wow, that was to go really for late. Blow. That was a, that was a, actually a charge, move, but the fact that that even happened, I'm really surprised Rachel got that hold off. Cause that was really really late. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it was on his last frame when that move came out. But let's see if uh, Pink Master can recover from that. All right, uh, Lisa has a pretty safe ground hit because she'll go on the ground and she'll do mm -hmm. a back roll. Yeah. To like you know respace and stuff, so you can't really be part of going on to ninja here with some splits. Yeah, dude, I'm surprised Lisa's not a ninja. I don't. She's called. It's considered a luchador, but I don't see 
Uh, Luchador is doing that many flips. It's like he's trying to do right, Very good uh, damage. Oh, Rachel knowing nice. that it's like, I know you're not going to finish this. <laughs> so I'm going to press a button right after you do this first hit. That power launcher is what he ended up needing. Uh, okay, launch smoke goes for the ground grab. Good damage, force tech. Mix up game. Catch him with it. Yeah, there's the wake up. All right, he needs, he needs to realize Pink Nacho needs to adjust his game because Air Gear is knowing what he's trying to do off of that wake up. All right, and then a good, uh, just, you know, random hold. Just, uh, well, I guess that's a 50 50 hold. If you know a kick's coming out, then yeah. you just throw out a hold. All right, so Rachel takes first round. No, first match. My bad. All right. Oh, oh this yeah. stage. This it's stage. Pretty much the same one. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just like in a different area now. All right, through it. But Lisa can't do anything off her because she was back turned. Ooh. And Rachel gets the back turn grab. Yeah, like if Lisa launch. does not adapt. Yeah, she Lisa might just. Lose set. Yeah, at least just try to do a combo that doesn't work on Rachel's heavyweight. There we go. Nice. And it gets the thing. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, no, no force tech. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> that was really lucky on the Air Gears part. But this isn't over yet. Okay, oh, Rachel got the run grab. Enough. Yeah. Uh, nice. I think you should press buttons after that. Because I don't know if this is flat out punishable. But you should press buttons. Okay, gets a little ground hit. All right, jumps over Rachel. Gets the back air. You probably wouldn't expect Lisa to end up going aggressive. Yeah, that's what Lisa, I think that's where Lisa shot. Whoa, that was, yep. that was really good. But that was, uh, went over all of Rachel's attacks and then still grabbed her because it's in principle. All right. A throw. A throw, I'll set up your throw and I'll trade it for another throw. I don't think there's any more breakable optics in this area. Yes. Oh, okay. I think Pete Nacho has... I think he may have adapted. Oh, oh there nice. you go. Oh, oh he's trying wow, to go for that I'm low really throw. I'm surprised the low throw didn't happen. It didn't <laughs> look like Rachel ducked or anything, unless he's fuzzy guarded so quickly. <laughs> well, I mean, like, for when you look at it, it looks like the hands don't reach all the way, which is Yeah, weird. but they do because DOA has floating hitboxes. So you can't go by, like, how long a character's limbs are because, like, you know, they'll punch, even though their limb will be probably about a foot away from your character. Yeah. It'll still reach and make contact. And I think that's a big uh, disappointment. Well, he switched quick. He went yeah, immediately he went to the hole. That's, that's, that's weird. Okay, I have no clue how this is going to go. I haven't seen a... Well, I've seen Air Gear Satomi, but I never thought he'd use Satomi as, a, uh, as an anchor. But, you know, your Rachel is losing. So yeah. it's like, why not go for the... Yeah, you know, try to go for the, the poke go. game, the delayed string. Nice. All right, that, that, that string from Lisa is kind of obvious, but she can mix up into several things from it. But most of the time, people, you know, expect to see the kick. Right, Meeting aggression is, with aggression. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Ooh, okay, hit Tony's punch after the went out, and she gets held. Oh, he tried to go for a throw, but he fought against it. Uh-oh, this is close. All right, good block, good block. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All right, this is close. All right, guard break. I'm surprised that wasn't held. Yeah. Oh, and just, whoa, man. Just going for just a flat out. Poor just, for a poor, poor just like a punch. I don't know if he decided to bring out his homie, like, in his initial plan. I think because he was Rachel was losing, like con uh, I guess convincingly for like the last couple rounds, and he's like, "This isn't, this isn't gonna work. I have to do someone else." Oh, goes with the oh, miss all of that, man. Good Oki game in this. Yeah, considering the fact that he has not seen the Atomi yet, he can't exactly completely adapt to it. Yeah, he can adapt to it because he only has just the random, just the three rounds, and that's it. All right, and that's Edgar takes it away. I guess he's Eric Gear's going up against you then. So, pretty sure I'm going up unless they want to do winners. Edgar's not moving, so I guess I am. Oh yeah, 
I guess we're going straight into the losers bracket here. And so we're gonna have two sets. Actually, two matches here. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. I mean, as we're, before we even started this match here, it's good to know the fact that Vincent has a lot of momentum from a lot of his matches lately. Air Gear, he might be unsettled from the first couple of matches within his winner's bracket. He had to switch to Hitomi just to, to come out with that last win there. And I feel like Vincent already knows both Rachel and Hitomi, so he might have an advantage. We'll have to see how this first set plays out, and then, I mean, we could probably work from there, but in my personal opinion, it looks like Vincent ends up, he might take it. Let's see here. Right. So, we still have to get to the blaze. All right. So, I'm assuming that once this is over, we might go into a winner's bracket and then go from there. Um... Looks like we're probably just going to be doing button checks at the moment. And then personally for this game, since probably his Rachel has not been too successful, so he might go with Hitomi for his first couple of sets. I don't know if he's going to switch to Rachel after the first set or anything like that, depending on how it ends up turning out, but you never know. All right, so they're starting their but button check right now. Oh, wait, is the actual match? Yeah, we might be in this actual match right now. Looks like Vincent's trying to take his time with Hitomi. Hitomi is pretty much just utter aggression and destruction going in for takedown. I mean, at the moment, Mila has to. Oh, looks like it wasn't enough here. Nice. A couple of mix ups. Oh, off the... Well, the good thing at least is that this is pretty much is where the stage ends up ending. Um, there's no more um, cliffhangers or anything sort of thing right from there. And Ager is just putting a lot of aggression on Vincent. I'm actually quite surprised. I feel like Vincent knows how Hisatomi plays, but... Takedown. Another takedown. And he managed to get successful this time with a throw. Nice, Gatling gun. Vincent trying to keep his distance here, but Hitomi just does not want him to have it. Nice counter. Nice. Ooh. It was a risky move for him to open up with that with Mila. Going in for a counter. Oh. Oh, come on, Vincent. There we go. Take down. This has got to have some sort of- there is his aggression. Here we go. This might be a point where Ergir might be concerned. All this momentum that he won within those two rounds, he's losing it. Nice 
Nice counter. Oh, you couldn't connect with it. Nice. Oh, here goes the critical burst. I feel like he could have done something more with that takedown with a successful throw, and he takes the first set. Now, is Ergir going to stay with Hitomi? I mean, he was pretty successful in it, but he has to maintain momentum. Or he's going to choose Rachel. It's not clear yet. Looks like they're taking a little bit of a breather here. Ergir is really concerned right now. They ended up changing characters. So Vince is sticking with Mila. Actually, he, he might stick with Hitomi. Ergir's got to get his head in the game. He just feels too... He feels so concerned after losing that winner's bracket. He needs to take what he had from his last match. I mean, despite the technical difficulties, he did manage to come out with a win. But he has to make use of this win. Otherwise, he's going to get knocked out. Oh, he is going with Rachel. Two aggressively over characters. Vincent's taking control right now. He probably already has an idea of how Rachel is playing. Vincent is keeping his distance. He's picking his moments where he can mix both patience and aggression with Rachel. Nice. Here we go. Nice. Yeager needs to keep up with this aggression so he can take the round. There we go. If Eric here hopes to win, he has to maintain the momentum for the entire match with Rachel, just like he did with that last round, or else Vincent is going to capitalize on concern. Pretty even all into a takedown. And then Mila goes in for a combo for it. Ergir needs to take control now. If he does not, he is going to lose this set and the match. He's going to be taken out of the tournament. He's got to do something. Come on, Ergir. What are you doing? Oh, my God. And so Vincent Rain takes the second set. And the loser's bracket. I guess the psych out from the, the winner's bracket was a little bit too much for him. And that cost him, unfortunately. All right, so we're going back to the winner's bracket here with Nix and Blaze. We'll be taking a break here and then probably within a moment we should be able to get started with this last match within the winner's bracket. Um, I mean, for this matchup, I feel like, I mean, 
it could be dead even, but Blaze has to use his momentum from all of his matches in order to beat Nyx. Nyx just smoothly sailed throughout the entire the entire tournament. So he's calm, cool, collected. He knows what he's doing. So in order for Blaze to actually gain an advantage, he needs to. He must have paid attention to using Lei Fang and be able to capitalize on any mistakes. Although Nyx is pretty patient. might get started any second here <laughs> everyone's a little bit busy with this raffle here and a lot of drinks going on all I gotta say is oh my goodness <laughs> that was well, because uh, me and Air Gear, we're like super long time rivals. And yeah. normally he always like pretty much beats me convincingly. And this is the first time I've actually like, I've, first time I've beaten him. But I know it was kind of like, I'm pretty sure he was already discouraged going yeah, in. From because, the winner's bracket. Yeah, and also for the fact that his match got cut off with against yeah. Blaze. So like I can't like, you know, completely take the credit for winning that fight because he was already like kind of discouraged Psyched going out. in. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I think, I think that finally the, the cake, the icing on the cake was when uh, he hit me with a critical burst with Hitomi. Yeah. And then he did three P plus K, which was just the elbow. It just, it just yeah, hit like me to I the ground. Like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, he completely dropped it. Almost yeah, surprised. he dropped, he dropped the comment. I like, probably could have, most likely could have killed me. I think he meant to do 3-3 three, three, P plus K for her. He's going to do her power launcher. Yeah. But he only pressed it once, or it only came out as he him inputting it once. So he did the elbow and knocked me down. And I think that's when he lost, you know, lost his, uh, his concentration. And I'm spilling orange soda on myself. <laughs> oh, no, my white shirt. Remember last time, um... I was wearing a white shirt at a friend's house. They had like barbecue or something. Like it was mess, super messy food. And I am, I'm always like super neat when I eat. And <laughs> I was like, I was like the clumsiest person in the world that day. Like I had to throw my shirt away because I got so much stuff on it. All right, so we're getting Mila against Lei Feng. This uh, button check is over, so this is the real deal. They're competing for. I don't know. We're well, competing to see who knocks who into a uh, loser's bracket. To face me. Alright, it seems like that overhead punch Mila does, it's supposed to leave her, like, I think it's like minus one or plus one or something, yeah. something like that. But Lei Feng is one of the only characters I know. She just, like, doesn't care. It's like, I'm gonna throw out a punch and I'm gonna beat you out of whatever you do. It doesn't even matter. Cause oh, the back stayed calm, cool, and collected this entire tournament. Yeah. Oh, see, there's that. That's what oh my. They're parries. Like Team Ninja, why do you give someone like their defense is their offense? <laughs> like it was already good. And it's like you know what? Let's give Lei Feng more parries. Let's give her like you know keep blockies. Let's have long frame windows. And then now she's just top tier. She, yeah, she's super good in this game. Like I'm really surprised other people don't play her. So I don't know, maybe in last round they might limit some of her parries, I don't know. Yeah, they need to like, uh, I think they need to shorten the frames on her. Because it makes you afraid to attack her, like she has, you're already afraid to do any mid kicks. Yeah. Because you know? she, if she holds that mid kick, you can say goodbye to like half it's your like, If you try to be aggressive, she has her parries. If you try to stay patient, she, she's just yeah. as aggressive. Yeah, so we'll have stuff, she have the parries and the grab to open you up. Oh, he should have went for a launcher there. So just a kick. 
Uh-oh, uh -oh, critical, critical burst, burst. launch. Nice. Alright, not the most damaging combos you can do, though. Wait a second. But I'm not serving the most damaging combos uh, works on Lei Feng, because Lei Feng has a very unique weight class. Her and Pai. They're like the Chinese female weight class. <laughs> so I don't think it'll work on Lei Feng. So I think that, that was good for I would have dropped it. Ooh, all this damage. Almost, almost 50. That was like 58. I mean, 48%. All right, Mila trying to mount the offense. That's where it gets scary to try to uh, mount them off a good. Because Lei Feng did go for a parry. Mila read it. There's another nice. parry, though. And got the offense again this time. It's so easy for Lei Feng to mount an offense. Yeah. And oh, here comes the mix-up game. Oh, Ooh. he could have done a low throw off of that hit. Because that hit, if it's on neutral, Mila can do a guaranteed low throw of that overhead punch uh, hits and like no one knows that <laughs> and it's funny though because it's in their combo challenge yeah but it's it's kind of hard to read though it's hard to pick and turn into it all right decent combo about no, one fourth health oh Ooh, good hold counter. good hold goes for the grab but that leaves her back but I guess her back's not really against the wall because it's invisible wall so she's fine Nice thing, precious. Truly yeah, he's fly. taking her time. Yeah, but, oh, okay, got up, good. Oh man, <laughs> right, Nico's doing pretty good to try to avoid certain things. Oh my, I would have. Oh man, I would have just ran up and just held. But uh, Mila, he's, she's playing, she's playing pretty patient. Yeah, oh, I, I got another hold. He's not Let's... wanting to take that chance. All right, okay. What's well, going to be the wake up game? Oh, oh, he made a mistake of assuming he wasn't going to do a move when he got up, so he went for a grab. Lei Feng did a wake-up kick and got a counter hit. Let's see what Mountain Offense. Guaranteed launcher. Guaranteed crumple. Oh! And he, not only did he trip her, which I don't think was the best thing to do in that situation, but he also went for an offensive low hold, or an offensive low throw. Nice. Nice. That's it. All you have to do is get one more hit off. One more hit. There we go. All right. <laughs> low punch. <laughs> Your health is low? Okay. Let me go low myself. All right. So, actually, this is pretty pretty even. Yeah. All right. Duck the offensive hold grab. All right. Lay fingers. You know, gets her own good, uh, low throw punish. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. He rolled to the side. Wasn't expecting the follow-up to come up. The Lei Feng assumed that uh, Lisa, I mean, th that Mila was going to kind of, uh, I don't know, ground squat and try to do a force tech. All right, good read, good read. Good read. Nice. God, that's what I think is one of uh, Nico's biggest weakness, is that um, his defense isn't really solid, but Lei Feng really compensates for it. And I think that's why Lei Feng is a really good fit for him. Because she makes up for the lack of his own defense yeah. because of the tools. But right now, it seems like Milo was seeing through it. All right, the neutral game, let's stare at each other. Oh, okay. We're going to do a little charge move. Deal away four lag tactic. Ooh. All right, gets one punch off. Good job. Oh, okay. Actually, press 3 3P instead of 3P. All right, you're always watching out for that low and then that mid comes. I mean, he's got to oh. have a... He's got to... Oh, no. He didn't get any punches off. Ooh. Oh. Good guess. Oh. oh, just barely. Oh, oh, man. So close. This is all just like... It's just tiny mistakes that are happening. Yeah. And they're determining the entire match. And so that puts just breathes through the entire tournament. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to the next match. We're going to do... Uh, Back to the sand dune stage again. This is like the fourth time. Like, Team Ninja, please fix your random filter. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, assume Lei Feng went to the third sweep. Who does? Lei Feng's I expect you aren't going to do it. They're not going to. Uh, Lei Feng has got the timing on uh, Mila's mount. Ooh, nice. Oh, this is the overhead. Slowly but surely, Blaze is trying to adapt to Lei Feng. He's trying to come back, but Lei Feng's offense is too good. 
Uh oh. Nice. That's gonna, yeah, the other one. Oh, there we go. Oh, collar ducking. That was good. Good reads. Good reads. Oh, okay. Lei Feng goes for charge move. Continue with the offense. I think we messed up the combo there. Oh, missed again. Thank you, Slope. No throw punish. Oh, nice. Aww. Oh, whiffed it, but because the certain sit down or certain, I guess, stun it was, Lei Feng just fell flat against the ground. Alright, play the spacing game. Here we go. Oh, the Lei Feng does oh. a stun game. This might this kill if he doesn't drop. Yeah, yeah okay. Alright, one to one. Rounds. Matches this is one zero. I believe. Alright, left Lei Feng, like just like Lisa can go for a little down hit. Because Lei Feng, after she does down hit, then she kind of backs up. So it's safe. You can't do anything about it. Oh, tries going for another grab. Lei Feng reads it. Starts pressing buttons. I'm going to try going for the critical burst. Ooh, move the grab take down. All right, one punch. Man. Uh-oh. Oh, he expects the that. damage. Why is Lei Feng so good and does massive damage on her holds? All right, good answer, good answer. My thing's almost down to 50 Ooh. HP already. A 50%. Pretty risky to do. Okay, good hold by right, Lisa. Nice. Uh, I mean, oh my goodness. Mila, I just see a grappler. I uh, doesn't get off the hit again. Oh, uh, once again, he could have done the low throw, but he got a mid throw, so it's all right. Trying to make right, a Okay, two to two. Man, I need to take notes, because this Mila's doing a lot better than mine was. <laughs> Against uh, Nico. Oh, Grand Chief Critical Burst. There we go. Oh, oh too, a little too many, but he got it back. Once again, was named Miguel Finney Punches. Or, or a grab. Oh, he can't lose his momentum now. All right, good. Oh, got a miss. Got a, ooh, a hold for some good damage. Ooh. And just, a, just running pushing. All right, so now it's me against Blaze. I don't know if it's going to be a Mila Mira match or not, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Looks like we're nearing the end of uh, this tournament here. Blaze versus Vincent Rain. I mean, this could go either way. I mean, each has their own momentum from both the losers and the winners bracket. So it's hard to actually make an assumption on who really clearly has the advantage at the moment. They're both Let's see here. Now I'll be wondering why, whether or not. Let's see here. Actually, they're both me. So I'm wondering if they're going to expect. Vincent's Mila, or is he gonna go with somebody else here? It's a tough call. All right, looks like we're going for button checks here. Let's see. Wait. Are we going to the straight match here? All right, it's straight match, actually. Let's see. All right, so looks like here we're about to get started with the final. Alright, so it's gonna be 
Vincent Rain against Blaze here. Actually, let's see here. So Vincent's going with Kokoro, and Blaze is going with Rachel. I guess due to the fact that Blaze can honestly read Mila a little bit more, Vincent decides to go with Kokoro to see how they... Alright, right, as we get started with the last match here. Who do you think has the upper hand in this one? Honestly, this could go either way. They both have their momentum coming from both the winner and the loser's bracket. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a tough call to actually to make an assumption right away. I think Vincent may have an advantage in that he was able to collect himself a little more from his loss, whereas Blaze is going straight from his last match. Well, it looks pretty even right now. Next. Nice. Oh. Vincent's trying to be patient with Rachel. Oh. oh. Here we go. Because, I mean, you got two overly aggressive characters. Vincent, I, I think he ended up switching to Kokoro because Blaze might know Mila a little bit too well. So yeah. he decided to go with a, a backup just in case. I don't know if he might go back to Mila if he ends up using the first set or not. It, well, I think he may stick with Kokoro just because of played his knowledge with Mila and he is doing pretty well with Kokoro. Whether Blaze switches to Mila if he loses is probably nice. Couple of mix ups over the cliff. They're trying to stay around the middle. They're, they're trying to be a little bit more patient than usual, but yeah. they're not trying to back up too much to avoid getting uh, comboed off the cliff because yeah. that adds up. Yeah, they're both being very careful about whether they want to hit or not because they both know that if they make a wrong move, they will get punished for it. Nice counter. Very nice. Automatic tech. Here we go. He's gotta keep his make out. Nice. Combo over the, the cliff. cliff. Next hit could do it. There we there go. We go. Alright. Match point for both. It would be pretty interesting to see a Kokoro in Grand Finals. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen that and I don't know if I've ever seen it. Yeah, really. like she's she's not as top tier compared to the other characters. Um, but I, she is I think she's like mid low tier. Yeah. I think she is really viable, but in this matchup I would say uh, I'd say it's like a more on Rachel's side. Just because she can shut down Kokoro's offense a little easier with her offensive holes and her sidestep. Oh, and yeah, that would be that match. The power blow. But I mean, the disadvantage for Rachel is that she has very few moves at her disposal. I mean, if yeah. people can actually read what Rachel is doing, she can easily be countered or people can end up adapting to her quickly. But you're always afraid to counter because of her throws. Those are a big... Yeah. Do you think we'll see a character change? I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, this this went really down to the wire, so I don't know if I mean he might stick with her. Yeah. Yeah. I think he doesn't want to lose his momentum with Kokoro and give Blaze the upper hand with his matchup knowledge. We've seen Zach Island a lot today. <laughs> like, is this a hint? Promotion. 
This event is sponsored by Team Ninja. I mean, honestly, the time that I ended up choosing Zack, Zack Island could have been useful. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> We see it going back and forth. Oh, no, oh here we go. Yep. We see it going back and forth a lot. It'll go Rachel. It'll go Kokoro. They both take away about the same chunk of damage. And there's a good counter. Nice. Here we go. Good. Start up. Keep the momentum. If I was Vincent, I would try to stay out of the water because of Rachel's one PP that can launch him. We don't he doesn't want that to get guaranteed out in the water. Here we go. There we are. I mean if only if Rachel could counter he could cap oh there we go. There nice. We are. It would be nice if Vincent actually took advantage of when Rachel ends up countering because yeah. especially her, her throws do a lot of damage when immediately after the uh, opponent counters. And it gives him a good amount of space to kind of get yeah. leeway instead of being right up against the right, right up against Rachel for a wake up kick. Nice, and he Very takes good. the third match here. We might see a comeback from Vincent here. I think he's starting to figure out Blaze's Rachel. Yeah, because Blaze is not being as aggressive as he was originally in the first set. Yeah, I think Vincent realizes that he needs to just go for his combos. And not be afraid of being countered by Rachel. And Vincent takes set two. That's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> I mean, this is the finals. This is pretty much going to go long. This is... Oh, yeah. We have two more right. matches. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, it looks like Blaze might be... Let's see what he's... Oh, he's oh, going, going to, to his main Momiji. Who do you think has the upper hand with this? Momiji versus Kokoro. Hmm. I mean, I feel like Blaze has not utilized Momiji as much as he wanted to for most of his matches. Because a lot of his early matches, he wasn't as successful with Momiji. Yeah. Kokoro might have the advantage, but if Blaze actually... They're both taking good advantage of what space. Momichi can do, then he, he can do serious damage to it. I mean, um, Kokoro here. Well, we see that his nice. change is definitely benefiting him right now. I've noticed he really likes to go low on a lot of attacks, even with Mila. Usually with Momiji, like, either she has the guard break, either that, or she can go low and she can automatically just lead into a combo. Yeah. It's, I mean, usually I've had a hard time even fighting Momiji because of both the guard breaks and her lows. Yeah. She has a very good character. And I mean, even attempting to um, to counter her when she's a, she possibly might do her guard breaks risky because I mean she can either do both a throw and she could guard break at the same time. Yeah. It do, they don't. Either, either of them really don't want to throw very. Oh well, we saw a throw there. That's good. But as a counter punish, we don't see very many high counter throws. And it's the same thing for that. low. I mean, I mean, I guess depending on the character, usually like some character like Helena who kind of use it, uh, utilizes a lot of um, low attacks to her advantage. Oh, looks like he's switching oh. to Mila here. This will be interesting. I 
I think we're going to see Vincent go for a lot of takedowns. Hopefully, like, if he could keep the aggression and um, keep her um, from going within the air, utilizing her air attacks. And, I mean, he, he uses a lot of um, lows, too, with Mila, so maybe he could help balance out the fact that Momiji uses lows as well. It's like it's the waiting Both game right now. Both are playing really patient. Uh, Blaze ended up making a move. Ooh. Nice oh, mix-up. Oh. oh, he goes for that got, got launch punch. a lot from uh, I mean critical that up, stun. That upward punch is pretty risky. Yeah. I think it might be safe because when Air Gear was trying to punish Blaze for it, he was getting high counter punched. So it might be safe, but I would say go for a launcher that would hit when they don't counter. Seen that those guard breaks you're talking about. <laughs> it's ridiculous when Momiji's combo stack up. She just pretty much took off half of the meter. Momiji has a pretty good advantage in the spacing. She's really good at creating and filling space. Unfortunately for Mila, she has to keep aggression, otherwise. Yeah. Momiji is will capitalize on it. Yeah. And Momji can take that right away but with her mid kick counter or her low punch counter. Anything that'll give her a juggle that can put you on the ground and possibly a force tech. And so far, Blaze just ends up having all the momentum ever since she started using Momiji. And yeah. he got a perfect. That was, that, that's the match, right? I think that's it. Actually, actually not. Actually, yeah. Yeah, there's like probably, so, Blaze has to win one more to be able to take it. Vincent won the second set with Kokoro. Oh, that's right. Wait. So Vincent has to make a comeback on this set or he's going to lose um, a title to Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Momji looks very awkward in this position. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think it's Grand Fountain because when Blaze beat him twice with Momji and once with... Who was he using before? Actually. Oh, yeah. That's my bet. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess it ends up, Blaze ends up taking it. Her butt looks very out of proportion right now. This angle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in the end is, I guess, you know, I'm, I've had a good time here. I mean, I would assume that this is probably the only tournament that I'm actually going to play. And hopefully there's more tournaments within the area so I can end up um, coming back to end up playing a little bit more and seeing what I can do with uh, a lot of the characters that need a lot of work, obviously. Especially with mains. <laughs> I've had so much trouble with mains for the longest time. Yeah, it's hard to pick. I think this is going to be an, uh, either an exciting match or just a repeat of what happened in their previous match, Blaze <laughs> and Meat Meats. I'm hoping for a reset. If only. But I think it's probably going to lead into the other games by now, I assume. I think we're either having Ultra Super Street Fighter 4 and then Marvel. Marvel's first. Do you think... Alright. Shout All right. out to um, Team Ninja and Tecmo. Um, honestly, like Tecmo. you know, a lot of people end up liking the game. Um, you know, honestly, I mean, the community as a whole has to get a lot better, to be honest. Um, I mean, within the Xbox community... I mean, especially late, as of late, a lot of times where I've actually tried to do rank matches, usually it's there's not that many people, and it's either between the low ranks or the high ranks, and you know it's kind of hard to like find that because I'm I'm probably I'm right in the middle in terms of rank, and you know I feel like we need you know 
to be to band together. I don't know. It's kind of hard to actually word it out. I would say, but because once last round ends up coming down to the Xbox One, Ooh, it's gonna split the community a lot. Gonna be on four different consoles. Yeah, with because the main issue now, because everyone's a lot of people I've noticed have been going to PS3 and Xbox One has not received as much attention as it. Um, I mean, it ended up messing up really badly with its release, and there's not that many games to keep people exactly satisfied compared to PS4. I mean, on it, I honestly feel like the console wars, it's a little bit, it goes a little bit out of proportion with that. I mean, I love both consoles, but the way that the Xbox community is now, I'm actually worried that once a lot of people end up porting over to last round if if somehow the community changes for the better or if it ends up getting worse it's, it's for me it's hard to tell i think the majority of viable and friendly players are going to go to ps4 and mostly the um how do i say this rude people are going to stay on <laughs> xbox <laughs> well i mean like i'm probably just going to stick to xbox um, I mean, it's not a bad system. I mean, overall, they they run about the same, but I mean, I stuck with Xbox. I ended up switching to Xbox right after PS2 and everything like that. I mean, I had a PS3, but that's in my mother's hands now. I don't even know what it, where it is at the moment. So I just been sticking with Xbox 360. I just felt like it'd be more difficult trying to split between two consoles, and. I mean, I've had more success with fighting games on PS3. I guess that's why it ends up being more friendly in that regard, that people can pick it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Xbox was where DOA um, Dead or Alive originated from. I mean, you can't really, you know, get rid of that. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, back to what we were saying. Shoutouts to Team Ninja and Koei Tecmo for <laughs> providing... <laughs> prizes to us so it's like dlc character codes i think we're getting to those later but yeah they sponsored this event so you i'm know. honest just is gonna be mad the ones that i ended up buying for a lot of my characters <laughs> you're gonna win them up, if they end up being for free and last round like it, it for ultimate because a lot of the the costumes that i ended up wanting to get for doa5 but i didn't really go into depth with it but when i when I started playing more at Ultimate, a lot of the costumes that I ended up wanting were for free and mm -hmm. everything like that. So, I mean, I guess that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. I think there'll be a, a handful of packs that are included in last round, but I wouldn't say too many because they still want to, you know, make money. They want to Honestly, have that I feel like the major issue, they need to fix their servers. They need to fix their the Their servers netcode. are bad. Like, yeah. the overall netcode. I think they, I think they have the resources for that. They now. have it. They have a chance to to do a lot with the Xbox One, but I mean, with all the money that they end up receiving from us buying costumes, characters, etc., like I mean, they need to utilize that, and they they need to give what the fans want. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, obviously, the fans are paying for the game, and. You know, especially with the split now into PS4 and Xbox One, it's like hard to, you know, know where most of the fan base is going. Are they going to go to PS4? Or are they going to go to Xbox One? I mean, chicken. What is it? <laughs> Weird shit's last chicken? <laughs> chicken? Yeah. Tastes like KFC. Honestly. Tastes like KFC. Yeah. Uh, I guess we ended up taking a short chicken break. Honestly, it's chewy. Um, that's not bad. I never had Wiener Schnitzel actually. You've never had Wiener Schnitzel? No. But I guess back to the topic on hand though. <laughs> I mean, will you feel like there's anything else that they need to fix on last round other than netcode? I think they need to implement some obvious 
buffs and maybe some nerfs nerfs to some people because okay elliot he he's definitely he's if he doesn't get buffed yeah because <laughs> then yeah, we know something he's wrong. around mid to low tier not a lot of people end up utilizing him or iron iron could use some changes honestly within the website it's saying that iron is supposed to be for beginner players i tried using him i can't use him i feel like hitomi is more of like a beginner friendly character yeah. than Ayn is. I mean, they use the same fighting style. I mean, kind of ironic, but Ayn just feels like I don't know, kind of similar to Phase Four in terms of actually like executing combos and you know taking your time with everything. Because of his wall rising kick launcher. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't have a lot of moves at his disposal either. I mean, sometimes you end up having to use the same combo, and sometimes people might take notice of that but you know i mean yeah, there's people really who are really good at iron they can utilize them pretty well i mean i've got my i got my butt kicked by a bunch of them yeah he doesn't have a whole lot of versatility in his move list like majority of his attacks you'll be able to see coming and adapt to pretty fast because they're going to be the same most of the time he doesn't have a whole lot he has mix up in the sense that you can go punch punch low kick but he doesn't have a lot of combo mix-ups I mean he also has that ridiculous counter hold that takes like a bunch of hell which is surprising because Hayate has the same exact thing but it doesn't take as much damage as Ainz does <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't, I don't get it <laughs> no. oh I guess and also characters they gotta have a male character in there. Oh, who do you think they're gonna add? I honestly don't know. They need a char like the only new male character we had was Rick. Like every like they might as well just make it an all female roster if they're gonna keep on adding female characters because the males get no love, especially for costumes. Usually, like for costume contests, especially the Halloween one, wi the women are always winning the costume contest. Like barely any love for the males. I mean. I mean, if, if I had one male, I mean, it would be at least try to balance it out a little bit. I can understand them having it add one more female character, but, like, there's not that many males. Yeah. I mean, technically, Bayman, Bayman and Leon are sort of the same. They have, like, different things about them. Obviously, that's why they're separate characters. But they got, they got a similar price style to them. I mean, Riggs, the newer character... And usually there's a bit of a learning curve to him. Honestly, I know that better than anybody else. Huh. Anyway, what do you think is... How do you think the next match is going to go? Do you think Blaze is going to stick with Momji or is he going to go back to Mila for Nick Neeks? I don't... I honestly don't know. It's kind of hard to... Hard to predict. He was <laughs> doing pretty well with Mila, but he kind of has momentum with Momji. And he might be be able to do a little more with her. So I mean, like I guess it's just in depending on what he ends up, what he realizes, what his mistakes are, if he wants to continue going with Mila, or I mean, you know, stick to you know what he's already used to with Momiji, try to make her better, like maybe add more combos or you know try to mix it up a little bit other than you know usually the same the same thing. Yeah. Well, she's gonna just like pull one out and he's just gonna pick phase four and just YOLO through the rest of the tournament. <laughs> I would be ha I wouldn't I don't know how I would feel about that, but if he won, that'd be pretty interesting. And I he see just that. ends up stopping stop stop using it. Mm -hmm. Dies as much as it ended up releasing in DLC. Now I wanna see that happen. Pick phase four. <laughs> Um, hmm, what else to talk about, honestly? Um, what other stages do you think they're going to add in last round? Um, I ended up seeing the Danger Zone returning from um, DOA 1. Yep. Yeah. And then Crimson. But we have a lot of fan requests for Aerial Gardens or like Demon Church. I personally want them to add some old ones but I want them to make new ones we haven't had a new stage in a while something with a cliffhanger instead of the so, actual two that 
I mean, like, those are the two stages out of all the stages that were made, even with Ultimate, they added more stages. Mm -hmm. Like, you you rarely see any cliffhangers. I want to see the return of the old stairs where you can just knock people downstairs or grab people downstairs. Uh oh, that one. That was, that was fun. I could add something interesting. I mean, with the Xbox One, I mean, with next gen, they can do a lot more than what is going on with the current gen. I mean, they have the resources. Yeah. We pretty much just say, shut up. Yeah. Take my money. But they I mean, can't you know, make it. Kind of do something with it. You know. They can't make it too different because they're still making the same product with 360 and PS3. So True. they can't do too much because they need to be some. They need to be fundamentally the same. They can have some graphic changes, but entire tweaks to like how a stage would run has True. to be able to work on all systems. <laughs> well. I guess from new stages, new net code. Or, I mean, like, at least if, if they end up making two female characters, make them, like, completely different. Well, but we know that one is, one is a male and one's a female now. It is? And we know that the male is a returning or a revived character, so he's pretty likely... It better not be Tengu. It better not, it better not be Tengu. I swear mean, to God. I, I mean, like, I realize people want the old Tengu... And yeah, but now we have a new one. Like, if you want to have the old one, wait for DOA 6, I think, at least, because we don't want to have Tengu the same, added. Same clone? And then <laughs> the next brand new character is another Tengu. Call me, like, or unless they just decide to, like, shove in Spartan in there again. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be a shocker. The new female is Spartan. <laughs> returning like I mean that leaves a lot of things out considering the fact that majority of the roster is just female characters yeah so a lot of people have narrowed it down to Raido 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 whatever most likely Raido and then maybe Tengu unless they just do something weird and like put Omega in the game or Omega yeah that's another one which I would prefer because he's at least more unique than Raido because like Tengu Raido's dead <laughs> And the new female, although Omega's dead too technically, and then Tengu's dead. Omega's dead. not technically. Omega's not very alive at this point. <laughs> I think he's pretty much all. All most of the boss characters are pretty much dead. Yeah, except Alpha. She just won't freaking die. She just oh, she's just phase four now. They probably <laughs> might just. I don't know if they plan on taking Alpha out with the oh, next no. DOA or. They're not gonna take her out. There's no way. People would, people would complain. That would be insane. I don't know. Honestly, I don't think people would complain as much. I think too many people use her. I rarely see anybody use her. I probably only seen like two people who actually use her as a main. But like most of the time, ninjas. Yeah. Maybe not as a main, but when you get to the higher ups in tournaments, you'll see, you'll see Tengu used like, or not Tengu. What am I saying? Alpha used when they just want to kind of mix it up, kind of scare the opponent because right, sounds like Ultra, Street Fighter, Fighter and Marvel are Marvel about to start can I hold mine? <laughs> <laughs> I guess like after the seating is settled, we'll go into ultra here. So we have the new male covered. The new female, we don't have a whole lot of information about. We just know that she's not a brunette. So she's, a lot of people say, or not a lot of people, but some people are saying, oh, maybe it's Miss Monday. And that's kind of a mixed opinion of whether they want that or don't. But what kind of styles would you like to see? Like a new, in the new characters? I don't want to clone. I don't want. That's all. I I don't want to clone. <laughs> something new. <laughs> new. I mean something new. I mean like whether or not I buy it or not. I mean if they end up putting it in there, I'll try it. I mean if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
but I don't know. Like, if they end up, I I just I don't want like the same thing in Tekken to like port over to DOA. <laughs> I don't want like a billion clones like in Tekken Tag Two. Like you have like multiple clones of like you have Lily uh, who's like p- pretty much her butler is the same exact fighting style. <laughs> it's okay, man. <laughs> no, it's not okay. It's okay. That was not okay. You got fourth. You're all right. Yeah, I lost both mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't lose by screen failure. Okay, yeah, that was pretty weak. I don't know your past, man. I don't know your past either. This is I've my first tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been below top three in any local tournament. But, I've never been below top eight. But how many <laughs> top players have you, well, mid top players have you had a local before? Um, put in Haji Shinobi, and put in Miko, Kishu Man, uh, Perfect Legend. Well, have they all been at the same tournament? Okay, then I don't know, man. That's uh, that's on you. <laughs> the overall okay, momentum yeah, that was, that just was, dropped. That was <laughs> lame. <laughs> Shout out to Air Gear for being salty. <laughs> <laughs> But he has a he he has a right. He his match got interrupted twice. Well, so you just want another tournament reset? He just let's have let's have a whole new tournament, you guys. I can't do that. True, I'm just. Even if we started from our match day, our our match, I'm still I'm still dry. The momentum just completely dropped from. It did not once but twice. I would imagine it just like once. I'm like okay. I'll give it a shot. Like twice at the twice. very last round. <laughs> Did you see me throw away my... Yeah. <laughs> I never do that in a tournament. I saw you take off your glasses and put it back on. I never do that in a tournament. Did you see me the fall classic? So got regions, dark classic? I don't do it. Things like that. Do you, I scream. Do you sh- okay, I was going to say, do you scream <laughs> at those? Because... <laughs> <That's> my gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I saw you leave your headphones off, I was like, oh, what's wrong here? He's not listening to music anymore? Uh, I lost a game to pick Metro. I know. Okay, it's, he, he, fighting him is weird. <laughs> fighting him is weird because it's so unorthodox. I don't know, like, if he ended up no, adapting to you and then he suddenly just played aggressively. It was that bad. <laughs> I was still thinking about that match. <laughs> complete psyched out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he was telling us about yeah. that how like he's never won against you. Yeah. But That's, something's messed up. You're pr- <laughs> you're pressing too many buttons. When he two two owes me, there's something messed up. When I lose one game to a random player. Shout outs to Air Gear for getting 2 0 It's okay, man. I'm okay getting 2 0 by two revenge. Um, by me. Nine. Yeah, by me. <laughs> <laughs> Air, Gear, Air Gear is okay with being 2 0 by me because he expects it. He knows I gave that to him earlier. He knows. He messed up a lot. He knows. He messed up a lot. Well, in my defense, you're pressing a lot of buttons. I didn't need to punish you. Yes, but I do a lot of as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's like a lot of people are staring to like continue their combos even though they're already like juggled. I don't know if it's just like that muscle memory of just kind of like mix up game and fake outs and everything like that just to kind of like disorient another opponent like um what you were referring to earlier about punishment and everything like that how basically a lot of mix-ups 
and everything like that. I guess like it wasn't exactly utilized with Tengu. Like basically, when I did um, for example, when I did a Rachel, uh, Rachel, I'm on the left side. Wait, is that the one that you kept doing in neutral? I thought you were doing four punch punch. The string. There was so much punishment that you could have got to me that you were used to. Maybe because you have all the online experience. No, I usually punish online. Or you could punch me. You didn't punch me. <laughs> punch you? You could have done a low punch on me that's true as well. Didn't I low punch you? Yeah. Huh. I low punch. Is there like a certain mindset with like, I well, guess in terms of, because normally you you don't want to chain like, a, let's say like um, for Mila like, like 3P for example, like you end up trying to um, complete the entire combo and that leaves you completely open to counters or anything like that so like people trying to like thing, do right? mix ups and psych outs so like it's like muscle memory so people sometimes don't exactly throw punish people know when a comp at this, at this stage of this tournament people know what to do they know the combo strings they know the cancel ones, the cancel ones. all they need to remember and try to predict is are they gonna cancel that string? Are they gonna move? Are they gonna, are they gonna continue? Are they gonna be aggressive and try to press another button even though it's not gonna work? But you could also you could also use that to your advantage because your opponent may not know that's a, an unsafe move. Yeah. Or it's safe, unsafe. Or it could be also nerves of your opponent is feeling. You know, you know, when you're playing in a casual event like you know your home and stuff. Yeah. So, it's all funny games, right? You're, yeah. you're so relaxed, there's no pressure on you. But when people are watching you, when the stream's watching you, when there's when it's not your it's not your environment, you sometimes kinda of forget what you're supposed to do, you know? Yeah, because honestly, I mean, for my first tournament you know, with the mix of nervousness and being excited at the same time, you I mean I came to play to have fun obviously, but you know I mean it's bittersweet that I ended up losing like twice in a row. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I just, I probably just need a little bit more training with a lot of characters because obviously I had a hard time trying to like switch from different characters, trying to find a main, and then obviously like you know you can't expect to exactly be perfect with a certain character with you know when you're just getting into him within like a, a month or so. Oh, I took a bus. Yeah, I'm, I live in Hayward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I pretty much I take a I take a BART and then I take a bus to get all the way over here, and then I just walked for like ten to fifteen minutes just to get here. I mean, honestly, I just use the same exact thing for college because I go to college within like um, De Anza and like Cupertino. Two? All I know is that once I get back, it's just a, another training fest until another tournament ends up surprising itself. I don't think I ever played Nye. I mean, I got lucky considering the fact that it was in San Jose. Other than that, like if it was somewhere else, I would have to pay like 35 plus bucks for like a train. <laughs> Isn't it ultra first? No, it's kind of yellow. Oh. They're, they're setting up the yellow to the ultra brackets. Oh, Alright. I'm just going to leave that for your own time. Because I'm taking on um, Blaze, Vincent, and uh, Lotus coming back to my room. Alright. We'll just be playing because we have two setups. We set up two DO setups. Yeah, all I know this is going to be a grind fest when I get back to training. Oh, Jesus.
Do you have any idea of what people should change for last round? I didn't even know you ever played her <laughs> at all. Yeah. I didn't know you played her before, like, this entire time. Because she was, she reminded me of Spartan. And I, right. I was a Spartan player in 06. Really poor. I was the only Hitomi, Jan Lee, and Spartan player. Oh, yeah, I was surprised I didn't see any Jan Lee from you. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not confident in Jan Lee. I'd rather play Hitomi or Hitomi in this Honestly, I don't want you to play Jan Lee anymore. I know for sure I'm like the person. Assuming like DOA4, I played like, I played all the characters, but like the ones I ended up playing the most were just basically Ayane and Christy. And then like DOA5 came around, I played Rig. That was a good character. Hmm? That was a good character. Every character is good, you just have to be good. Yeah, because I just feel like Rig has just a really big learning curve. <laughs> And there's just like a lot of moments where I just ended up becoming really negative on. Especially like some of the attacks where it ends up like turning you around. And like that, like, I mean, I try to back up sometimes, you know, with a back step, but sometimes people automatically know that's going to happen and they end up taking advantage of that with obviously stringing a combo or anything like that. And then DOA5 Ultimate, I just, I played every single character. Like, I didn't feel like using Christy or Ayane, I didn't feel like I was actually fitting well with both of those characters. Like, I played Rick a little bit at the beginning, and then for some reason I stopped playing him. And then I completely went to, like, other characters, because usually in, like, private lobbies and stuff, normally, like, me and my friends just end up picking random. Mm -hmm. So, like, I ended up getting a taste of, like, a couple of the characters and stuff. And I ended up making a deal with myself that... If I ended up doing a combo challenge with any one of the characters, I was going to see if I could do something with that, which ended up being Tina. Mila was a, a second behind. It was just like her tag combo that I cannot do with, with her, to be got honest. It was like towards the very end of it. I was like that in vanilla. I would just use anyone. Like if I found a combo with someone, I would be like, okay, I'm going to try to learn more about these people. But then... When I would take a break from DOA, I would come back and be like, I just want to play this one person. <laughs> I don't I don't want to deal with anyone else. So. Lost interest. Persona are getting kicked out for Street Fighter and Marvel. <laughs> the struggle is real for those two games. <laughs> hmm? I didn't even notice they were in training mode. <laughs> I mean, I guess it kind of depends. I mean, you have Tekken 7 which got released early or leaked by IGN yeah do you guys plan on getting Tekken 7 do you plan on getting Tekken 7 yeah. I like Tekken I'm gonna try it out it always makes me frustrated though oh, oh shit I, like I gotta buy <laughs> what what console are you getting last round on if you're getting last <laughs> round I bought a PS4 um, two days ago yeah, and yeah I got Called Diablo 3. Oh my god, <laughs> Diablo 3. At least you didn't get it when it originally came out, but like all the servers were like completely wiped and then everybody got hella mad. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and they also don't too. Pretty much. Ultimate yeah. Evil Edition. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go PS4. Yeah. It's like. 
Why am I being left out here? <laughs> <laughs> your arm is, you, you were like right here to me, so I kind of did the little. <laughs> now I'm really worried about the Xbox community now because of YouTube. <laughs> So, I mean, like, the Xbox One, I'm still trying to hold on to, like, the Gears of War series. I mean, I feel like there's hope, but, like, I don't know. It's the, the new studio. Time. Judgment games suck. Judgment, yeah, I know it was a disappointment. Yeah, feel awesome. yeah. Especially three. Yeah. I, I mean, like, Judgment made a couple of good decisions, but, like, overall, like, the entire package was, like, bare bones. Even their season pass was bare bones. Like, initially, like, five four or five maps at launch and then like releasing like a couple of other maps nah but I mean like you got this new studio doing it and I mean like the only person that we're familiar with is Rod Ferguson which I don't know if, if that's a good thing or it's a bad thing I don't know I don't play Gears of War, so... <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I'm just used to shooters. That's, that's yeah. I guess, the point I'm trying to get across. Because, yeah. like, the Xbox is made for shooters. Yeah. PS, the PlayStation series, is completely, like... I mean, it's usually more towards fighting and RPG a lot of other... Of yeah, it's more versatile in that fact. And to be quite honest, I thought that shooter, the shooter, a shooter was going to be my first tournament. Not a fighting game. I forget that sh I always forget that shooters do tournaments. They do like I mean, I mean, look at Call of Duty. They make like a big, huge. Oh my gosh, Call of Duty! <laughs> Grand Stand. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a bunch of twelve-year-olds at a tournament. For Call Not of really. Duty? I mean, most of the. I mean, when I've ca caught a glimpse of the tournaments, usually they're like, like, teenagers to. Like usually with like on average in their twenties. And then after, like, people completely hated on Ghost, it's like a mixed bag now for Advanced Warfare. <laughs> it's like, I want to play. Wait, are they playing I right now? I want to play. Yeah, they're playing right now. I want to play too. <laughs> for real. You going you gonna to leave me alone here? I, I, feel, I feel the love right now. I like by myself. There really isn't any love. The complete hate is real. Oh yeah, see we got a volunteer. A volunteer. Hey, how's it going? Mic check, mic check, mic check. <laughs> so, I guess earlier before, I guess the entire stream ended up going off topic with like random shooters and everything like that, we were discussing pretty much about last round. And then also like, I guess the community wise from like PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, I just know that there's some salty people blaming it on the screen and stuff and what happened <laughs> oh well there i mean it's not like there's any meter right so you just pick it off from where where it ended well i guess like the the main reason why is because you know people have momentum and whenever the screen just goes like pss, like that momentum drops not for, I mean, like it could probably be for both of them or maybe the person that's obviously trying to be aggressive or attacking or the person that has the advantage so i mean i can understand that i mean the first time usually people are not too bothered by it but the second time that actually happened like <laughs> all i gotta say is that you know you get what you pay for pretty much i mean you're not always gonna get things your way don't be a diva. 
things happen. Although, I mean, you got to try to please the fans in some aspect, especially with last round coming around the corner. I mean, like, they need to fix servers. It is what it is. What's done is done. <laughs> That's the motto I live by. I guess. All right, so we're getting ready to play Grand Finals soon. We're just chilling for a little bit. Warming up. All right, stream. So, who do you think's gonna win this Grand Finals for DOA? Hit one if you think Nico will win. Hit two if you think Blaze will. I don't know where it is either. <laughs> I heard it's like down that way. <sighs> it's really weird seeing myself on stream too. And that makes two of us. I never thought I would actually be commentating for an actual like tournament. So shouts to our sponsors. Uh, shouts to Breezy Excursion. <laughs> uh, shouts to Capsule Entertainment. The streaming organization on Twitch. Uh, Godlike Combo. You can uh, check out some of the... Uh, you know, it's a great alternative to Challenge. So Godlike Combo is a software so you don't have to do it online. Well, that's pretty useful. Uh, shouts to Team Ninja who's sponsoring the, this event too. Obviously and Tecmo. Oh uh, yeah. Did you see Did you see the uh, this message on the um, at the select screen for for this tournament, yeah. advertising it. That's how I ended up like realizing that this tournament was in my area in the first place. Uh, where'd you ooh, come from? Um, Hayward. Oh, okay. Yeah, I came from San Jose, so I, I you know, and I already know Nico, so we're already good for this. Yeah, because like technically, since it's already in the way of my college route that I end up taking, which is obviously just a bunch of buses and obviously a lot of money, but you know. I mean, I wanted to take a look at the tournament. I mean, a lot of my friends kept saying that, you know, go to the tournament. You know, obviously it's a little, it's a lot fun, and you know, you get to meet people and everything like that. Yeah. Get, how how well did you do? Uh, I lost twice Eight. in a row. Well, <laughs> oh, so you went 0 two. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, I'd slight, I fare slightly better at two and two. Yeah, I need. I just feel like I was out of my element so you're not used to playing in in a tournament environment pretty much i mean usually it's just casually you know with friends private lobby yo it's a ranks. it's a whole new thing yeah. playing playing in a stream environment and a tournament environment so you just have to get over it and just grind out as many offline games as possible that's all i gotta say because uh i i, I play multiple games so that's how i got the tournament nerves out of the way. Yeah. And just, you know, just play for fun. I mean, yeah, I guess that's what I originally ended up coming to do. I mean, I just ended up training a whole bunch for DOA, really. I mean, I have Ultra, but I really haven't, like, gone into it more in depth like I have with this game. Yeah, who do you play? Uh, for Street Fighter? No, no, in, in uh, DOA. Um, DOA, right now, it's, it's, my friends wanted me to get back in the rig. So I ended up like trying to pick him up again, but I feel like he needs more training. Tina was someone that I ended up picking up due to the fact that you know I, I completed her com combo challenge, so maybe I could possibly get some somewhere along the lines with her. And then as of late, like a couple of days before the tournament, I ended up picking up Kokoro. Like I was. Dude, this her a tournament bit. has been filled with multiple uh, characters of the same ones, like, like multiple Kokoros. I've saw. Like multiple Milas, yeah. uh, multiple Momijis. <laughs> Especially yours. <laughs> Dude, uh, um, I saw the costume I actually like, and for some reason I started to perform better. And it's the um, her schoolgirl outfit. Yeah, the I guess it's like some sort of placebo. <laughs> I call it the Sailor Moon outfit because she dresses <laughs> almost like Sailor Moon. And for those of y'all that don't know, that is my favorite uh, anime series. The fact that they've made it for so long is insane. I even competed with this stick, all right? <laughs> I even competed with this stick. So. Shoot. 
I'm, I'm afraid to use stick to be quite honest. Like, I mean, I've done stick in arcades before, but it. like, it just feels weird. Like I haven't really played enough of it to really grasp like overall concept. I personally like, maybe took like maybe a month, a, ma a month and a half to actually fully transition from pad to stick because some games I actually just play pad. The other games I needed a stick. Street Fighter, I always need a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm used to the arcade environment, and it just feels weird hitting shoulder buttons. Yeah, because especially on DOA, like, I have to switch between, like, analog and pad for, like, certain moves and everything like that, and it's like... Yeah. Like, I just started using pad. Most of the time, I've used analog for, like, most of the time that I've played on DOA. Yeah, I just like using stick for DOA because the four major buttons I need, all my fingers are on it already. Yeah, that's true. Because normally, especially for high attacks and low attacks, especially low attacks for me, like, my main weakness I know has been lows, and it actually translated into, obviously, me losing. Especially with the Neo Tengu with automatic follow-up you know, with the... I've yet to encounter that character anywhere. I mean, I've encountered her when it initially dropped for DLC, and then after that, like, I, I've only seen, like, Maybe like one or two every so often. I barely see her anymore. It was kind of similar to like the Phase Four kind of hype for it. Um, I mean, other than the fact that people still play Tengu, but like I haven't really played against her enough to fully, I guess, adapt. Especially with the characters that I ended up using, I haven't had enough training with them, and obviously, Rig has a learning curve. Kokoro, it's like you have to be aggressive with her, but some people can obviously take advantage of that if you end up being too overly aggressive or you're not utilizing other things. Yeah, uh, I just personally need to learn character matchups and learn how to use my own character more because I use a very limited move set with my characters, just like a few moves and just rely on fundamentals, just like try to outpoke people. Yeah, that's the exact same thing. I just use like kind of like same move sets for like a, when I play fighting games casually and then when I got in the DOA and how their ranking system ended up working like probably like around when you get to B rank or something you obviously have to train and realize what you're doing or else you're you might lose a lot holy oh shit I just noticed <laughs> her rocking course light oh the, the course light here our sweet babe our booth babe here Yep. It's not real though. Um, the thought is real. <laughs> we might as well. We might as well just stick around, on uh, like stick her around because we're playing DOA and I think we all use female characters. Yeah. <laughs> one way or another, I guess. Like I only use one. I girl. mean, some of us just like touched like um like used a male character once. Like I used Dan Lee just to uh, play a mind game, which didn't work out. That's probably why the male characters don't receive as much attention. Okay, when I first played this game, I told myself, I'm going to play a waifu character. Because <laughs> I didn't play the previous editions of DOA. You know, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I started playing this game, and I wanted to use Mila. Because uh, at that time, I was also training MMA. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty sick. Then I realized I suck. Then I played an old DOA. Like, I think maybe 4 or 3. I think it might have been two. I don't recall. Uh, and I used uh, Aani, and I was like, "She's fun. I'm gonna use her." Yeah, I I see a lot of Aianis online. That's. I think she's like top tier. I don't know about tiers. I'm not really too knowledgeable on tiers. Yeah, like I just started kind of like grasping the the tier sort of um, thing with like Elliot towards the bottom, very bottom. I mean, like, if people, I mean, I see a lot of Elliot, good Elliots if people actually obviously train enough with a certain character. Obviously, that goes for almost pretty much all the characters, really. And then I decided to use Momiji because uh, she's easy to use. <laughs> and I have tendencies of picking cute characters. I'm, I'm sorry. I do. A lot of you fellas that play this game, you guys do too, alright? Let's be real. You probably would have just snatched it up right away if she was blonde. Yep. <laughs> Alright, for uh, last round for DOA 5 LR, what do you want to see for changes? Netcode. 
I agree. This <laughs> netcode. The server is completely. Horrible. And I want for fan service. I want color swaps. True. Instead of like the same exact costume in a different color, and you end up yes. having to buy that anyway, or they end up doing it for free after you already bought it from this version. That's why I didn't like exactly buy anything from five. Yeah, I gotta make sure that they don't call my name for Ultra or Marvel. Oh, you're up within the tournament? Yeah, I entered multiple games. How much training did you put into this tournament? Uh, probably like a week. Yeah, you know, actually, to be honest, so did I. <laughs> and, then, and the other half was towards, um, towards Ultra. Because honestly, like, I didn't know about the tournament. Until recently. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, why not? Why don't just, you know, I end up training for as long as I can. I get where I get at some point and then just, you know, play the tournament and see how it ends up going and then work on some stuff. Are you going to use this experience to uh, train up for future tournaments? Honestly, I actually would. I mean, I enjoy the game. I mean, like... You know what you should try? Attending a major and, a, and competing in one. That's a whole different experience. It's just like actually commuting to the actual thing. That's like yeah, like NorCal Regionals was in Sacramento this year. Oh, Sacramento. Yeah. Well, I mean, I used to live out there, and then I ended up moving all the way down to the Bay Area, and then. I mean, I would need a train, but it would be like thirty-five dollars. But you know. I mean, I work. I get. I earn money. And we have uh, latecomers trying to enter last minute, but brackets have already been made. My nose is extra, extra itchy today. I don't know why. I'm not even <laughs> sick. <laughs> I actually was glad. Well, I actually, registration started kind of late. I thought I was going to start around 12 where it ended up usually. No, we're, we're running on FGC time. So, like, it was, like, so much time to actually, like, you know, I guess warm up a little bit. Also, shout out to Booger Kids. Uh, they have awesome apparel. You should check them out. And of course, Breeze Excursion. We're at their headquarters in lovely San Jose, California. And for those of y'all that that uh, support Capsule Entertainment, Joe Capsule is in San Mateo to help run NorCal Strong Style. So it's a very good weekend to be part of the FGC because we have Tekken up in San Mateo, which is near San Francisco. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we are just we are just filled with lots of games. So shout out to y'all that support both events. I will be at NorCal Strong Style tomorrow. We have Nico in the background, not doing illegal activities. Completely ignoring the beautiful babe that's right behind us. Wait, hold up. Say hi. Hi. And it looks like Street Fighter's about to get underway over there. Honestly, if they do have last round, because I guess it was confirmed that they have a male and a female character. I mean, like, I mean, if they do do another female character, <laughs> I want something like out of the box. Yo, you know who I want them to add for last round? Wolf from Virtual Fighter 5. Wolf. <laughs> yeah, we can take Bass. Bass, Tina, we Lisa. Yeah, we all use waifu characters. I don't know if Kokoro ends up. Do you know how hype Wolf is? Wolf is hella hype. We have too many waifu characters in this game. I know, people want Vanessa too. Yeah, we all... We all have waifu characters in this game. <laughs> Yeah. 
They're appealing to me. <laughs> we need. I guess overall original characters. Huh? Overall original characters, because like I guess, I mean the last. Huh? We're doing. Hey guys, um, this is Timtastic. I decided to use the EMP tag just for fun, for shits and giggles. <laughs> and still, Spyro is still here, all the way from the very beginning. Probably, I might stay on for a little bit longer, honestly. So, we have some people here at this event for the Capcom Fighters. We have MMG Julio, PH Crack Fiend. We have CJ Showstopper. We have Filipino Champ. So we have lots of top notch players. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was running. <laughs> Alright, so shout outs to the title sponsors. Like, once again, KT and TN, Team Ninja and Kohei Tecmo. Uh, shout out to Tom Lee, who supports all things DOA in this community. I've, I, I've only honestly been part of the community since May of last year. Yeah, I've been only I've I've started getting into it probably within this actual year. Um, I didn't exactly I started picking it up again probably like April, and that's when I ended up meeting like other people and then getting into the game and everything like that. But I mean, I actually met Nico last year for DOA because uh, we ran brackets at uh, NCR, so that's how I met him and decided to get some casuals and decided to learn the game. Ooh, I just I already know that when I get home it'll be a complete grind fest. And tomorrow I get to start all over because of NorCal Strong Style. Uh, yeah, that's the second one. Alright, looks like they might be doing button checks here. Nico most likely will be going to his trademark Leifang. Blaze. I don't know. He might start off with Momiji. Um, I'm not too sure. Possibly. Um, oh, yeah. He might. Yeah, he's going to go with her. So, uh, Blaze going with uh, Sailor Moon Momiji. <laughs> That's uh, my costume of choice. And because I didn't know she had that costume until today. I've been playing her ninja outfit. Oh. So, probably within the next, like, the next time I play DOA, I do have to buy her DLC costumes. I'm gonna laugh if, like, if you actually get last round and that actually becomes free. No, all the DLC that's bought carries over to the uh, really? to the next edition. So I mean, are they gonna set up like a marketplace there for the the ones that if they end up deciding? Well, to, like, if you have PSN, later? it carries over from three to four. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, both. Nico and Blaze are doing button checks. Oh, they're done. All right, we're we're going to stage select. And we're in the middle of nowhere. These guys are not appropriately dressed for combat. <laughs> and Leifang with the first attack. So, nice out. Nico is coming from winner's bracket, so Blaze will have to win the set to reset the brackets. 
looks like he's doing pretty good at right now. I think this first round is just for feeling each other out. Because... You know, just trying to get the rust out of the way. Nico has been running the tournament. It's hard to run in the tournament and compete at the same time. Yeah. Blaze probably on the other hand with me with all the, um, I mean, with all the wins that he's been carrying over. I think, yeah, I think that that momentum just got stopped because of that long delay between losers finals and grand finals. Yeah. So there were so much room to kill. Throw. Yeah, definitely for sure I'm getting this DLC costume. <laughs> Dude, imagine they gave her the color swap so I can have Sailor Venus colors. Oh my god. They would be the best. They're pretty much worried about underwear colors more than actual, like, color colors. I mean, if they did have color colors, I'd Fuck it! Team Ninja, you do what makes us happy, alright? Get that DLC. Street Fighter has those color swaps. I want those color swaps. I want that blue and orange. <laughs> or you can like edit it out like Capcom versus SNK. I'm not, I, was, I was thinking like Street Fighter Cross second. Or, or uh, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Oh, yeah, that's pretty because I haven't played Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I played Tekken Tag Tournament too. I just haven't played it as much lately. I mean, oh, so it's now tied up Ooh. in round. I mean, game one. With two rounds apiece. Grab punish. Yeah, because he's. Is there a uh, particular costume you want to see? I don't know, like, I feel like there, there's already a lot of costumes for female characters. I mean, like, I mean, if they have more costumes for Rig, that would be pretty chill. I don't play Rig. I have nothing to say about Rig. I mean, just say. I, mean, I don't play both But, you know, I mean, they, they, they don't have exactly enough costumes for male characters. And usually, I mean, I even saw, for example, when they were voting for um, the Halloween costumes for upcoming DLC and, like, Pretty much the majority of the wins were coming from all female. Dude, girls. imagine if like MMA companies reached out to Team Ninja for Mila for um, Mila costumes like like Tap Out or something or the UFC. All right, I gotta go play Street Fighter or Marvel, one of those. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so this is the grand finals. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not having hype anymore, but okay. Um, hey, Vincent. Money match. Money match. Money match in the hotel. Well, actually, I can't. I, I'm not allowed to do money matches anymore. It's considered gambling. <laughs> Unless you have like some connect or something, I mean, you can spy it on you too. That. Well, okay. Um, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Beef jerky. So we have newcomer Blaze. I, I, I have no moment. I have no hype anymore for some reason. <laughs> You gotta have that hype, man. I mean, you got farther than I do. I still have that hype. I'm just not used to losing so fast. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess everything happens for a reason. I guess you were meant to experience that. I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> don't look at me no. Like that. <laughs> you have food in your mouth, man. In your teeth. Huh? Snowback? No, he has like teeth in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Food in your mouth. <laughs> oh, so uh, I think I think Nico won. All right. I think a one two zero. 
Um. Sorry, I don't have any hype. Um. <laughs> oh, he ended up switching Mila. Mila here. He's not having as much success with Momiji. I think Mila. I think he's he he did well with Mila. I mean, his Momiji is really solid. It's just his Mila's actually really good. I was surprised. His his um his pressure game. Does have a big, huge learning curve to her, especially now since he got nerfed in Ultimate. I think Nico's in his head though right now. I think Nico's in his head. Yeah, that's why he ended up switching characters. Yeah. Meaning he doesn't trust in his moment, G. Well, like after that big, huge delay in between, like. In between the finals, like there's like no momentum carrying over from all the wins that he ended up having. It doesn't really matter though. It depends on the player. Like I can, I can actually come back even though I haven't played in forever. There's some players that like require practice constantly in order to you know refine their skills then there's like Nico he doesn't have to like really practice because he's played Lei Fang his entire career he doesn't play any other characters in tournaments so it's it's not that hard for him to you know get used to Lei Fang muscle memory yeah muscle memory if you're if you're a character specialist it's not that hard to remember a move now when you learn master like at least three characters, then yeah, I can understand that. But Nico's playing solidly and he's about to win. Yep, another double push again from him. And Nico wins best of the battle of six. Alright. See ya. I mean, shoot. Nico stayed calm, cool, and collected this entire match. He Breeze through the winner's bracket. All that momentum that Blaze had completely dissipated, and Nico capitalized on it.